Hey, what up America? This is your boy Bouchon Glover of Better Black America TV on YouTube. And you have just tuned in to A Better Black America this week. Now today is Sunday, October 20th, 2019. And pretty much A Better Black America this week, we're gonna just basically talk about uh, the happiness of the news cycle for the previous week because everybody knows that Sunday is the first day of the week and which in and which is uh, I would say notable or effective to the black community and one of the uh, topics of discussion uh, is Elijah Cummings the the death of Elijah Cummings and uh, we're going to do a little moment of silence for the uh, congressman Elijah Cummings and he, his whole career, you know, was fighting for the Democratic Party and, you know, pretty much being a gatekeeper of, of the Democratic agenda. But what saddens my heart, what saddens my heart is the fact that the last three years of Elijah Cummings' life, you know, it was basically to impeach Donald Trump. You know, so did that have something to do with his with his illness? We don't know uh, his his topic of uh, what was the reason of his death? We don't know. But, you know, the news cycles are are showing and in, in, in letting the people know that he has been having some illnesses and uh, he was sometimes in a wheelchair using a walker. But the cameras didn't show that. But the fact that the the last three years of his of his life was dedicated to uh, impeaching Donald Trump. And that, that's not a good thing. You know, it's clear when, when you have, you know, karma, you know, there's karma, there's all types of consequences and stress that comes along when your whole purpose and your whole being is to destroy somebody else's image or presidency, you know, but, but you know, his death will not go in vain, you know, but it is an eye opener to our, our uh, elected politicians. And we as a black race have to, um, be honest with ourselves and and do what we have to do and that's to protect the race now the democratic party is for the party the democratic party is for the party now say that again the democratic party is for the party it's not for the black race it's for the party and its idolatries and what goes with the identity politics that goes along with it now as a race the only way we'll survive is if we organize and come and have a narrative for you know, specifically black America. And I've been involved in some think tanks and uh, within the following months to come during the uh, elect election cycle, there are gonna be some, some pushback when it comes to uh, blacks and, and when it comes to votes. I'm not talking about niggers. I'm talking about blacks because niggers are still stuck on stupid and will be. I'm talking about free black independent thinking men such as myself. So when we talk about the black race, we, it's not about your, your sexuality, it's not about your gender, it's not about what do you claim or, or whatever you want to be. It's about the advancement of the race and more importantly, the survival of the race. Because Melinda B. Johnson signed those civil rights acts in, you know, on July 2nd of, of uh, 20, the July 2nd of the year 1964. He added women and the LBGTQ community, which included uh, the women's liberation movement, which they just celebrated 55 years of women li li liberation and the gay pride community. The LBGTQ community just celebrated 50 years of pride. Now, what is the black race? What are we celebrating? You know, 55 years of mass incarceration, 55 years of poverty, 55 years of being broke, busted and disgusted. And I'm not talking about from an individual perspective. You know, a lot of blacks, you know, have made it and are successful, you know, especially in the entertainment industry and in the workforce. I understand that. But I'm talking about the race as a whole. I'm not talking about you and your personal disposition as a family. I'm talking about how the Jewish community protected Jewish community. I'm talking about how white America protect white America through white supremacy. I'm talking about how the Chinese and Japanese and Koreans protect their brand because blacks are all over the place. So therefore, what we're going to have to do, and that's the premise of a better black America is to find solutions and resolutions to move forward and to have a slice of the American pie in which our ancestor helped bake for the last 400 years. And if you don't know, now you know that the 400 year curse is over. It was over August 20th of the year 2019 because the first documented transatlantic slave came August 20th of the year 1619, Jamestown, Virginia. So go ahead and look it up and do not take my word for anything because I, I, I would like 
love for you to, you know, get involved in doing some research and finding out about your history. Don't just do, just listen to what I tell you. Take the time of your due diligence to fact check and to find out the truth for yourself. But we all do know that, we're, that we were here as, as indigenous, indigenous natives, that there were black Indian tribes, that we were already here cultivating the land, basically living high off the hog and just chilling here in America before pre-Christopher Columbus. You know, but what they did was, you know, it was a game, it was a chess game, and we have to stop, you know, allowing it and we don't want it to continue. Because in 1964, Lyndon B. Johnson, he checkmated black America and gave us the illusion of being equal just because we can go to your colleges, just because we can sit at your table, just because we can live in your community. He, he did that, but that was the death knell because it basically shut us up and, and forced people to psychologically vote Democratic. Because America is a republic, it always will, and it always will be, because black America will make sure it stays that way. Because the most conservative human being on this planet is a heterosexual black man. I've been talking to, to brothers, and I ask you know, a lot of them, you know, do you got any gay friends? Not, and I'm, not, I'm talking about you know, Generation X and baby boomers. I'm not talking about the millennials. And they sit back and say, nah, you know, because we are conservative. We understand you know, our, our sons are, you know, that's my son, you know, that's my daughter. It's not it. She doesn't get to decide what she wants to be when she feels like it because you can't change science. Because you got X, X and X, Y. You got boy and girl. You cannot change the science and make it something else. It's male and female. That's what it is. And that's what it's always will be. So therefore, we're going to have to start protecting the truth and stop allowing from a political perspective to push us further out of American history because we must stand here and fight for our, our liberties and our justice because liberty and justice for all is what the Constitution says, and it's, it's what the, the Pledge of Allegiance says, it's, it's what America's supposed to be about. So as a race, you know, if, if, if black people built this nation, and the funny thing is that Donald Trump mentioned it this week. So a better black America this week, this week, Donald Trump mentioned that blacks, you got to get your credit. You know, your ancestors built this nation. He said that out of his mouth and he's true. He is it's truthful. And there was the Freedmen's Bank, you know, there was uh, 40 acres in a mule. There was things put away, put aside for the for the advancement of the black race. But for somehow there was a undertone to make sure that the race did not advance. So therefore, we're going to have to, you know, take a page out of their handbook and just basically have an agenda. And then the think tanks that I do be uh, uh, that I have been privy to be a part of, you know, we just might, and we're going to talk about this in weeks to come, might be a blackout 2020 to let not only the world know, but the Democratic Party know that our voting, our, an agenda for blacks is very important. You cannot skip us. You cannot act like we're not relevant because at the end of the day, based on our belief in God, you know, we're conservative. You know, I'm not saying that we're going to flip and be Republicans, but I am saying what we're going to do is we're going to be independent to hold both parties accountable and be swing voters to support our agenda moving forward because we've been on pause for 55 years in the Civil Rights Act. We've been on pause. So socially and economically, it's time to advance. You know, we train our children, get a good job, go to school, get a good job and die. But what about the race? You know, what about the race? You know, is your life fulfilled going to work every day? We have ideals as well. And we're gonna be talking about those ideals moving forward. So that's one of the topics of discussion, and it really was for Elijah Cummings, because you know the Democratic Party, our elected officials, they're gatekeepers. Okay, and stay tuned, check that, hit that like, hit that subscription, you know, subscribe because and hit the notification because we're going to be talking about gatekeepers because they put black men and black women in power to protect their agenda. That's what they do. You know, and when you put that black woman and that black man in that position, it's about their family and their personal disposition. So it's not really about the race, because if you look at the Democratic Party, what has our elected officials done for the black race? More importantly, their cities. Elijah Cummings is from Baltimore and Baltimore is the number third worst city in America. It's ranked number five for rat infestation. It's number three in crime. So instead of trying to impeach Donald Trump for the last three years, why wasn't he fighting to change his community? And see, that's the challenge of where we are today. That's my challenge. That's the purpose of this video today is to basically 
talk to and call out our elected officials to do the job that, that we selected them to do because they've been in office for 30, 40, even 50 years career politicians, so they're pretty much holding down a job. But the Democratic Party has pretty much lost its way, okay? It doesn't even, as, as, a, as a party, one nation under God, they don't want to pledge allegiance in the school. They don't want you to say to the republic for which it stands because America is a republic. America is not a democracy. We practice it, but America is not a, uh, a democracy. So we're going to talk and we're going to educate the people moving forward and we're going to talk about the difference between a republic and a democracy. And we're going to talk about the historic the history of the Democratic Party as to why black, the black race supports. And it's not really the black race, it's black people because they declassified us as minorities. So it's just a, a powerless minority group that the Democratic Party has, have, has pushed us down to, but we gotta get back to being who we are, which is a race, and get out of the minority pool of women, which includes white women, gays, which includes white men, the immigrants, and everybody else. Because our ancestors built this nation. Our ancestors would be turning in their graves to see that we're sitting back on the sideline, not fighting for, or taking advantage of opportunities and the sacrifice that they have sacrificed to be who they were dealing at the time that they're dealing in because we're free and they lived their whole entire lives through slavery and Jim Crow. And now that we're truly free, we got to get off the sidelines and we got to start framing our history moving forward. Okay. Now in closing, God rest your soul, Elijah Cummings last three years fighting to impeach Trump, you know, possibly the, the symptom or the, the, the death could have been maybe, you know, Trump's Trump deranged syndrome. You know, you can't focus on somebody else because when you're trying to destroy another person, the, 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 you know, the real people sit back and say, what are you trying to hide yourself? And that's why we're looking at the Democratic Party, because President Trump has access to classified information that you don't want him to have that he's releasing. OK, and we're going to be dropping a video moving forward about some of the stuff that he has released. And it's astonishing. OK, some of the stuff that he's declassified and I've been privy to read some of it and we're going to share that with you. But in closing, the Democratic debate was this week. The Democratic debate was this week and, you know, poor Bernie Sanders, the heart attack survivor. I mean, health has a lot to do with being a president. He, you know, I don't know about that. You know, you just had a heart attack, you know, and, and, and you're, you know, you're pushing 80 years old, you know, Joe Biden wrote the 94 crime bill, which pretty much was the checkmate in black America when it comes to mass incarceration, which that bill was sold by Hillary Clinton, where she said that we were super predators need to be brought to heel. OK, but we did. We were brought to heel, but black men are waking up. But like I said, niggers are still asleep. But the best thing about that debate, OK, the best thing about that debate when I watched it and, and I was not impressed with anything. I, I, I really, you know, from an odds maker, I don't see anyone that can actually compete with Trump because he's plays chess and they plays checkers. But the best thing that I've seen in that debate, and I will be sharing with videos to come as to why I feel this way, is that Kamala Harris and Cory Booker's black ass was to the left. They were nowhere in sight <laughs> because clearly they're not polling. Clearly, they're not going to be a part of the agenda moving forward, no matter what they do. They move them to the side. OK, it's a part of that divide and conquer. They think just because she's a sister that went to Howard, just because he claims to be a brother from Newark and he lives in a community that blacks will support. No, niggers will, but blacks won't. But like I said, I was watching that debate and I forgot that either one of them were there because you're looking at Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren and and Bernie Sanders and, you know, Corey way over there and Kamala way over there, too. So that's a sign. But with that being said, man, have a great day. Happy Sunday to you. And thanks for tuning in to A Better Black America This Week. It's your boy Bouchon Glover signing out. Peace out.